Looking for the ultimate convertible car? The Bentley Continental GTC can't be too far from it. With a 6-litre twin-turbo W12 engine, it possesses a blend of transcontinental pace and luxurious comfort that very few other vehicles can match. If ever there was an open demonstration of money as a passport to power, then this is it. You might not believe it to read the papers, but the rich are getting richer. Forbes magazine reckons that there are three times the number of dollar billionaires that there were 20 years ago, with a lot of them worth a combined total approaching three trillion dollars. Now, uh, presumably the UK has its fair share of them too, because supercar sales don't seem to have been hit too badly by the recession. Cars like this one, Bentley's GTC convertible, are still parked nose to tail down Knightsbridge, just as they are down Hollywood's Rodeo Drive. Now, this isn't always a good thing for super luxury car makers. Celebrity chef Gordon Ramsay famously sold his Bentley Continental GT in disgust after supermodel Jordan pulled up alongside him in an identical one at the traffic lights. Now, that's why even exalted manufacturers like this one are producing ever more exclusive versions of very exclusive cars. This Continental GTC Speed, for example, a 200 mile an hour convertible testament to an enduring brand. The standard GTC is arguably one of the world's most beautifully engineered luxury convertibles. In speed form, it's also one of the very fastest. Twist the plump key, and in this speed model, the uprated 600 horsepower W12 twin turbocharged 6 litre engine burbles into life. A valve in the exhaust uh, operates on startup to increase the oral entertainment on offer, and an example of the, the kind of attention to detail that really characterises this car. Now, the same valve opens under hard acceleration, embellishing the wonderful feeling that you get of hurling what is essentially Claridge's on wheels from rest to 60 as fast as a Lamborghini Gallardo. That's in about four and a half seconds. Owners with access to an airfield or who happen to have a particularly extravagant driveway in front of their stately home can watch as 100 miles an hour flashes past in 10.6 seconds. And they can even see the magic 200 mile an hour figure register on the speedometer if they're brave enough. With 552 brake horsepower, the standard GTC model is, is almost as quick. Just as well then that this car features the largest brakes fitted to a, a standard production car. They're ceramic in the case of this particular speed model. Now, marshalling all of this power is a six-speed ZF automatic box that can work either in fully automatic mode or you can access it via these beautifully crafted, if not perfectly placed, gear shift panels behind the steering wheel. It sends drive to all four wheels where an advanced traction control system is set to work in deploying it. The GTC Speed model, uh, meanwhile, has a dynamic mode built into its electronics which allows a greater degree of wheel slippage for owners who want to engage in a bit more spirited driving. The air suspension, meanwhile, has uh, a CDC continuous damping control which uh, reacts to the driver's input, stiffening up the suspension when the car is being driven more aggressively. Alternatively, you can program it to one of four different modes. Select one of the stiffer options and it's surprising just how quickly you can hurl this car around a twisting country lane should the need to do so arise. This speed model rides 10 millimeters lower at the front and 15 millimeters lower at the rear than the standard GTC. But to be honest, both are pretty impressive in this regard thanks to a chassis that's almost twice as stiff as that in, say, a BMW 6 Series convertible. The result is the prevention of the kind of body wobbling that you get over bumps in, in cheaper drop-top models. And uh, true enough, this car feels as solid and planted on the road as its coupe counterpart. There's very little wind buffeting on the move, and what there is only really becomes noticeable when you're sitting in the back and you're travelling at speeds well over the legal limit. Let's get some perspective here. It takes over 150 man hours to hand build this car. That's five times longer than your average family saloon. The steering wheel alone takes eight man hours to put together. 
Over 90% of the interior surfaces are covered in soft Nappa leather. And if you tick the box for the cross-stitching option, you'll occupy a Bentley worker in crew for over a week in doing it. Each W12 engine is hand-built and tested by human ear as the factory engineers have discovered that that's more effective than any machine. Suddenly, you begin to see the rationale behind the £150,000 price tag. More justification is found in the beautiful Carmen-made fabric roof, which, um, together with chassis alterations, adds a further 110 kilograms to the coupe model's already considerable weight. Now, taking uh, 25 seconds from roof down to roof up, it's not the quickest folding mechanism around, but you can operate it at speeds of up to 20 miles an hour, and its cantilevered operation is virtually seamless. Uh, with not one mechanical part showing as it goes about its various contortions. Now with seven bows to maintain stiffness, it features a triple lined fabric construction to ensure the best uh, acoustic and thermal insulation properties. The outer layer is thicker than that of any other convertible, while the middle insulating layer is a good deal thicker than the entire roof sections of most drop tops. The inner layer here is made from high quality cloth, so impressive that from inside here you'd think you were in the fixed top coupe version of this car. There's even an interior light built into the headlining. Of course that roof has to go somewhere and sure enough boot space is reduced to just 235 litres, that's down from the 475 litres you could expect in the coupe model. The rear seats are alright for short journeys but you'll probably be better leaving them to children or designer shopping bags. From the outside, Bentley brand enthusiasts will mainly recognise this GTC Speed model by its huge 20-inch multi-spoked alloy wheels, though the particularly observant may also spot these widened exhaust pipes, the small boot lid spoiler, uh, and at the front, the lower, wider air intakes in the front bumper and the darker tint to its imposing front grille. Inside, there are Speed branded tread plates on the door sills, a three-spoke sports steering wheel, aluminium dash inserts, uh, aluminium drilled pedals and a leather and chrome gear lever. The seats are supremely comfortable but would benefit from the kind of neck warming vents that even cheap convertibles nowadays offer. The dashboard, beautifully trimmed in leather with a choice of either wood or this rather curious aluminium type finish, features faultless ergonomics that are marred little by the rather fiddly operation of the sat-nav. List prices suggest that you'll probably be paying somewhere in the 135 to £165,000 bracket to own your Bentley Continental GTC, with that top figure representing the £17,000 premium required to uh, opt for this speed variant. Now, uh, for that kind of money, you could also be buying uh, spider versions of either Ferrari's 430 or Lamborghini's Gallardo, or for a little less, you could have an Aston Martin DB9 Volante. But none of these alternatives can really match this Bentley's majestic elegance, either on the road or on your driveway. Whether you choose the standard 552 brake horsepower GTC or the 600 brake horsepower GTC Speed that I have here, the standard specification is exhaustive. The driving position adjustment is entirely electrically operated with memory functions for adjusting the seats, uh, the steering wheel, and the mirrors to your own pre-arranged requirements. The infotainment system includes a DVD satellite navigation, a 6 CD auto changer, a TV tuner and a screen that enables you to uh, change your various suspension settings. The telephone system is voice dialing and can link to almost all Bluetooth enabled mobiles. Uh, there's also keyless entry, electronic climate control and a rollover protection system where steel hoops spring up from behind the rear headrests should the unthinkable happen. From there the moneyed classes can spend a further fortune on the options list with uh, items like this amazing NAN stereo that's fitted to this car that has to be heard to be believed. Now it may not surprise you to learn that running a 6 litre W12 Bentley convertible is not a low cost exercise. This speed model pumps out 396 grams per kilometre of CO2 and is supposed to uh, average 17 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle, but I think you'd be lucky to get that. 
It seems that the uh, concerns about uh, taxation and fuel consumption that are increasingly prevalent in other areas of the market uh, matter less to cars in the uh, exalted stratosphere that this one sits in. Mind you, when you look at what cars of this calibre cost to buy, it's little wonder that road tax bans and fuel consumption barely register. Even the small matter of depreciation, uh, you should get about 58% of your purchase price back after three years and 36,000 miles, will probably barely register with potential owners. This Continental GTC is a wonderful achievement. It isn't too taxing to create a supercar capable of lapping racetracks at outlandish speeds, but to create one that can do almost the same while cosseting you in an atmosphere akin to a very exclusive gentleman's club is a rare feat indeed. Only one of these is like having your own private jet. In fact, it's better than that because it's so much more usable and roofed down, you can enjoy the journey so much more. It's a convertible in the best tradition, a true convertible a Bentley convertible.